from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference, brought to you by Girls in Tech. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Girls in Tech Catalyst event, about 700 uh, professionals, mainly women, a few men, a busload of, of uh, some kids came in to watch as well. And we're really excited to have the founder and CEO of Girls in Tech, Adriana Gascoigne. Adriana, first off, congratulations on another Thank great you. event. Thank you, thanks so much. It's been awesome. I mean, all the energy, all the vibrancy in the room, everyone's here to learn and grow and, and listen to these amazingly accomplished speakers from astronauts to venture capitalists to serial entrepreneurs. It's really exciting. They're great, they're great stories. I mean, it's a really cool program, just a single track program, mm -hmm. single room. And I think you have, how many sessions all together? Probably 30, like 15 Lots. a day? Lots. Yeah, <laughs> no, I you think it's count. about 20 per day. And then we also have some breakout sessions, like workshops. So it's a little more hands-on. We had a cocktail party last night, a lot of networking, a lot of connecting. So a lot of really productive ways of helping careers uh, develop or, and also finding out about new and interesting opportunities. and. Right really connecting with other women in tech, uh, both in the high tech sector as well as the startup right. sector. And so just some really, really cool. simple advice, right? Like raise your hand, take advantage of new opportunities, go into areas that you don't have expertise in. Be authentic. Ask questions, be yeah. authentic, be curious. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really like. It's, a, it's good, actionable, simple, straightforward things that you can do to advance your career. Exactly, but exactly. you are everywhere. I mean, this, this organization has grown. <laughs> I, I keep an eye out on you on Twitter and stuff, obviously, and you are all over the world. So yeah. give us kind of an update as to where Girls in Tech is in terms of uh, members and locations and kind of sure. how it's grown over 11 years you've been at it. Yeah, over 11 years and our international, our global footprint is something we're extremely proud of. We're in 60 chapters, so 60 cities around the world, in 36 countries and in six continents. And now we have over 100,000 active members. Uh, by the end of 2020, we're increasing that to 200,000 active members, approximately. Um, and we're growing into 45 different cities. Um, and hopefully, knock on wood, in 100 chapters. So that's a pretty massive growth spurt that we're experiencing. And there's just huge demand. Right, right now, we have a list of over 160 people who want to start chapters in their city, which is really um, telling about what people think about girls in tech, how our programs are impacting these tech communities, how we're empowering women to have a voice and really creating change within societies. Right. So for us, it's, we're, it's a pride thing, but it's also the impact that we're making and really encouraging women to excel in their careers in tech, whether it's become a manager at a startup or a high tech executive or start their own company. Everyone has a different path. Right. We want people to find their passion and purpose in life and achieve that because if you do what you love, um, you know, a lot of us do what we love, some of us don't, but if you do what you love, you can be way more productive and right. happier. Right. And in the end of the day, isn't that our goal? Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so much, uh, the corporate participation has just skyrocketed too, since I think we first saw you a couple years ago in Phoenix. I mean, the number of corporate logos uh, on the banner is fantastic, and really the messages from the people we've talked to today is they not only see the value, but want to get more involved and, and, and do more events with you guys, because oh, yeah. they see very, and it's, and it's altruistic a little bit, but it's also real basic business ROI. They need more good people, and this is an avenue to get more good people. Exactly, I think diversity and inclusion is no longer a buzzword. They're really seeing the ROI and creating diverse workforces. It helps with building revenue, right? Right. So if you have a more diverse and innovative workforce, then you're able to create um, products and services um, that are more diverse, more comprehensive. Um, there, you have more uh, opportunities to problem solve in a creative way. Um, so really there is a, a lot of different elements in addition to creating a company culture that's more conducive to creating safety and comfortable work environments for all employees, minority groups, right. people of different genders, et cetera. Right. So I think that it's something that is not just, like I said, not just a buzzword. It's really important that they incorporate it into their 
strategy, overall business strategy, and recruiters are now flagging it as something that's extremely important because they are seeing how it really impacts um, the company and their business. Right, really interesting story on the GoDaddy side. We, we've interviewed GoDaddy a ton of times at mm -hmm. Grace Hopper, and I remember like, GoDaddy, what are you doing at Grace Hopper, right? Yeah. You guys were like the notest Grace Hopper of all, but they changed the culture, and the interesting part of the story is it's like a lot of little small steps mm -hmm. can actually have a really, really big impact. Yeah. And they've con completely turned it in, oh, by the way, their financials are looking pretty good as yeah, well. So it's it definitely amazing. pays. Yeah, GoDaddy was actually my very first sponsor. Really? So, yeah, and so it's really exciting to see that, and people actually asked me, I mean, they're so controversial, or they were in their Super Bowl ads, like, right. why would you go out on a limb and work with them? And I said, well, I talked to their whole executive team. Uh, they hired this amazing uh, CTO, happens to be a woman. We had multiple discussions about them changing their brand around. And, you know, everyone deserves a second chance, right. I believe. And so they ended up supporting me, not only the organization, but me as their leader. And uh, I owe them a lot for that because we were able to produce the first Catalyst Conference as a result right. and many other programs. And more importantly, you know, start hiring a staff, um, have money to invest in operations, different resources right. for our chapters around the world, deploy more programs like our coding boot camps, our Amplify Business Pitch Competition, our Global Classroom, which is our e-learning platform, our Hacking for Humanity series. So GoDaddy is a, is 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 really has been really a strong partner to us, and we we owe them a lot for our success. Right. Well, it's funny too because she said that you know they did the analysis and like sixty percent of their customers were women operating small businesses, and it's like hello, yeah, maybe maybe that there's a good is thing the there. the entrepreneurial sector. <laughs> yeah. That is the tar target. Right. Yeah. Well, I know you're super super busy. Mm -hmm. Give you the last word before you let you go. And and again, thanks for having us. We're super excited to be back here again, and uh, you know really you put on such a great program. Thanks so much. Yeah, we always love working with the Cube, and we love you guys having a presence here and capturing the amazing sound bites and stories from our very accomplished speakers who happen to be amazingly passionate and amazingly altruistic. Yes, there's so. no shortage of energy in the room, even yes. though they're all a little tired than a long <laughs> week. All right, well, thanks again. Thank you. She's Adriana. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the Cube from Girls in Tech Catalyst 2018. Thanks for watching.